Nobody wants a fishy crock and boosh. What, four little black specks <laughs> have appeared on the ceiling. Have we still got that traffic cone? Ow! There are some times where I probably shouldn't film. The key word is try. Hello everybody, it's Barry here. Welcome to a very early morning kitchen. Uh, it's it's well, just about 8 a.m. Uh, which to, obviously to most people isn't isn't that early, but for filming, uh, it no hello girls. Hello. Uh, it normally is because uh, today we have got a lot uh, of steps to do. If you remember, recently I did the black lemonade, and then we did the follow up, the black bread slash pizza. Well, I said I'd make it a trilogy, and yes, we are doing a black crock and bouche today. Uh, if you don't know what a crock and bouche is, it's basically, if you know like profiteroles, like shoe pastry, pastry for shoes, it's a big tower of that. So girls, I need one of you actually, whilst I'm doing this, to make me a cone, a big cone out of paper. Because the one time I've done this before on the channel, I used a traffic cone. <laughs> and that was amazing fun, but I don't have a traffic cone. I'm not a, a, you know, a traffic warden or anything like that. A, a lot of steps involved. It can be quite scary to do shoe pastry. It's the same thing to make chocolate eclairs, but we're going for this big towering black crock and bouche thing, which should be epic. But we've already started off on quite a negative. The last two videos we did, we used something called um, activated charcoal, which of course for some people um, it's not beneficial to use if you think if you're pregnant and things like that. So please research it before using it. It is supposed to have health benefits, but other people suggested using squid ink. So I ordered a pot online and it actually says cuttlefish. I guess that's another name for, is that another name for a squid, a cuttlefish? I'm quite an inquisitive person as you know, and I opened the jar um, last night, just in case. I smelt that. And I have no joke, that smells like like fish poo. It is so proper, like the most strong, like salmon, like really strong smelling fish. Nobody wants a fishy crock and bouche. We're gonna try and make this sweet dessert and it's gonna like taste of fish just to get the black color. But luckily, I still have some activated charcoal powder. So as much, I mean, I don't know if I would even put that in the bread. It literally stinks. Ingredients, cuttlefish ink, water, salt, thickener, sodium, contains mollusks, may contain traces of crustaceans, fish, milk, and celery. <laughs> I love that celery, it's like they fed this cuttlefish a nice sort of final dish of uh, milk and celery. How does it, if you could answer that, why, why would a, a, a sort of sea fish thing contain celery? And that's 90 grams in there, and you only need one gram diluted into water. So quite potent, but as we found before, this is pretty good, and I have a backup as it's sweet that we can add some chocolate flavor to. Kind of brings you up to speed with where we are. So the first thing we're doing to make the shoe pastry is merging this butter with the water. As it heats up, it's gonna melt it all through. We have one consistent mixture, and you do wanna simmer it very briefly. Got it? And what happens is once we get that boiling, we chuck the flour in just to cook it, and then eventually we slowly incorporate the eggs in. I'm just trying to work out at what stage do I make this black. I don't want to sort of modify this too much because it can be quite temperamental. Um, so I might add it with the flowery bit. Translation? I'm not sure. <laughs> We'll, we'll find a way. It's starting to bubble a little bit. We do not want it to simmer off. We want to keep as much of that moisture in as we can. I've found that over time because that will help it rise. Okay, awesome. Uh, and if I just stir it around with a wooden spoon just to make sure there's a little buttery lump there. Stir it with the heat really low to melt it through. Oh, and then what we do instantly is dump the flour right in there and it's gonna be like, oh my gosh, I'm really dry. But you just get a wooden spoon and this is where it starts to get a bit crazy. It's gonna thicken up dramatically, but this is cooking the flour, okay? And you need to keep it stirring so it bonds together. If you don't do the right things with it, it will just go saggy and it will look like the sole of a shoe pastry. So that has come in together as one big blob now. I'm actually taking it off the heat for the time being because it does help to have it cool, but this is the step where I'm deciding to add in not only the activated charcoal, sorry, the activated charcoal, but also some dark chocolate, just to enhance that color, but also give it a teeny bit of flavor. So I always quite like dark chocolate, it's nice and glossy. And the thing we're here for, look at the color of that. Two and a half teaspoons of that. And it's actually off the heat now, but it's still over where the heat was. We have got ourselves a black blob to eat. 
Don't eat this yet. It needs some eggs, but it has to cool down. If we add the eggs now, it will just curdle it. I am so glad we didn't put the ink in. That would have been very fishy indeed. As we want this to cool, it makes sense. Oh my gosh, that just fell out beautifully. It'll cool down quicker outside of the pan. If we add the eggs, as I say now, it'll curdle them, but we can beat them and add the egg extract. What is this? I made our kitchen out of Lego. You made our kitchen out of Lego? Yeah. Oh my gosh. Look, is that the pugs? Yeah. <laughs> And there's the sink, and there's the fridge, and there's the hob, and that, um, yeah, okay. The whole family pizza. That's amazing. Thank you. I find with my kids, they're like super creative. Like Chloe and Phoebe are both very sort of like doing art and drawings and things like that. And you know, Phoebe with the t-shirt designs. And when I was their age, I think I was like literally run home and go, Mom, I ate a woodlouse. A little bit of vanilla extract, completely optional. My excuse is there wasn't as much technology and I didn't have anywhere near as much Lego as they have, so there was a lot of wood lice about, so that was, yeah, that's my excuse. That's what angle I'm going for. Actually, do you know what? I'm gonna add a little bit in there. Why not? Let's have some black eggs. Uh, what's happened to it? It's kind of, no, it's made a little island. Okay, I'll keep beating it and see if it does. Oh, there we go. It kind of gone green. It will do a addition to our dough. All right, I just googled a cuttlefish, and uh, I almost <laughs> instead of going on the image tab, I almost clicked on the shopping tab, which would have been our oh, children. We've got, now got cuttlefish uh, as well as pugs. They belong to the class Cephalopoda, which also includes squid, octopus. So they basically are a marine thing that uh, has ink, and uh, they're quite little cute things, aren't they? Look at that, huh? That's what we're not putting in the shoe pastry, but now I understand why it was so fishy. Just to say, if you did want to make uh, a croque and bouge, and you don't want to make it black with greeny eggs, um, that's completely up to you. You don't have to add the powder at all. The recipe is exactly the same. Just omit the powder, omit the chocolate, uh, although the chocolate would be pretty cool, and, and just cook it. And in fact, you're spotting it when you bake it until they're golden brown, which might be tricky. Uh, with the, I didn't think of that. The other thing is you can make the actual uh, shoe pastry in advance and a lot of professional chefs when they're making a big flamboyant one they do it over several days so they'll make them and freeze them uh, and then you know pipe the cream in and build it for like a wedding or, or whatever and then do crazy stuff on it but I'm trying to do mine in a day. So I am gonna add probably I don't know in fifths if we can do it in fifths just do it like wing it okay and I find it, you can cheat a little, I don't know if it is cheating, but using an electric whisk is brilliant. And in fact, when you do it at first, can you see how crumbly that's gone? Watch what happens as we add more egg. So add it, whisk it through. Once I've got all this egg added, as I'll show you, it should become not amazing. Well, I don't know what the color's gonna do, but it should become like glossy, like one dough that's a bit slippy. And there we go, that is it all added in. If I go like this, it should hopefully just, there we go. You want it like that so it slides off the beaters. So if my calculations are correct, I should have enough for two separate trays. So I'm preheating both of my ovens at the same time on the median shelf. And the bad thing for me, uh, time-wise, is that I want more than I think I'm gonna get out of it. I'm actually gonna double up that mixture and make two batches. So I should have four trays worth of these if they work. So let's get this batch going. One ATC fan 200. I'm going quite hot. I'm just setting up my piping bag and uh, I'm not sure if you can see, but I've got like just up there, three or four black specks that <laughs> I don't know if I, I don't think I got crazy when I did that whisking then. I think it was fairly controlled somehow. I've got four little black specks <laughs> have appeared on the ceiling. Oh, what a feeling when there's black specks on the ceiling. All the tricks that I talk about, I would say nearly 90% of them are ones that have uh, been said in the comments and videos. I've been like, oh yeah, that's brilliant. So for example, getting a, your, your dough into a piping bag is really easy with a glass. I used to struggle massively and get it everywhere. And I think there was one video, it was like, just use a glass. Like, yeah. But I'm taking, uh, this is like a two centimeter nozzle, stick it into a, a big tall glass and just pull it back like that and create a pocket to load up your dough. And it's quite a thick one, so it shouldn't droop right out the end. Should be all right. I'm gonna use half my mixture first of all. I don't wanna go too crazy. 
Uh, and another thing someone taught me once actually is to press the air out, make sure you don't get any air bubbles in. So sort of massage it a little bit. And that is ready to go. Push, and I'm gonna probably do like three in a row. Now don't worry if you get a little spike like that. I've got a little ramek in here with some water and what I'm doing is just where it's got that peak, you can just flatten it with the back of the spoon and a little bit of the water, okay? Oh, Look good, don't they? Look, looks like graphite. Make a tennis racket out of it that. It reminds me of clay. Or a suspect emoji. Hmm. Okay, so here they are before they go in. I want you to look at how they look kind of like bottle caps right now, okay? Or even like nice buttons. And that's quite symmetrical. I'm quite proud of myself. I'm normally terrible at stuff like this. Boom. And in goes the other batch. So we'll see what happens. bring to you an important news flash. We have puffage. Check this out, it's about halfway through the baking, almost at the point where it starts to form that initial shape. And if you look in, I mean, you won't be able to see it behind the sunset oven light. Uh, there's little drops of moisture on uh, the pastry itself. So if we take it out now, it could collapse. Give it about the initial bake, 20 minutes, but they have really risen, okay? Awesome. So they've gone from like pebbles to spheres, and that's what we want. Right, mate, pointing at the oven, yeah? Yeah. All right, so we'll just, watch out, mate. Hold it nice and strong. Ah, ha, ha, ha. Turning it around nice and quick. Oh, they look like meatballs. They do look like meatballs, don't they? Yeah. It's heavy. It's heavy? Are you okay? Yeah. Did you do it? Ugh. I've got to do the other ones now. <laughs> oh, straight in. Spin it around. You see them? Yeah, looking good, right, mate? Yes. Remember how flat they were? Yes. Right. So about another 10 minutes just to firm it up. <laughs> just to firm it up. Uh, the biggest problem now actually is gonna be that we've got some card, but it's nowhere near big enough. Um, have we still got that traffic cone? No. I think when we moved house, I threw it out. We're gonna bodge together some, this is, um, actually, this is A3? No. Yeah, yeah A3. Kind of need it a bit bigger than that. So we're gonna bodge something together with a bit of tape and then we'll just make some sort of cone, like a dunce hat. Quite apt, really. This is four pieces of card taped together, which kind of looks like the flag that would represent the country of black cock and bush. Crossed it in the middle quite a bit, so nice and strong. Only the one side, so this will be the bit where the food actually touches. We're gonna roll it like this, to give us the corner there, and then gather it up. Oh! Look at that! It's like an Olympic torch. <gasps> we can just put some chips in there. Yes, we can just put chips on it, mate. Freezer. I would love to do that right now. Okay, so it's had 35 minutes in total, but keep your oven on very carefully. You can actually see that they're nice and strong already, but we just go in the side and just put a sharp knife through it like that. Okay, so you've got like a little line. Can you see it? And that is just gonna let, when we put it back in, it dry out inside for about five more minutes. They're done, now putting them on a wire rack to cool down, which shouldn't take long, but you can see the benefit of doing that extra drying out of five minutes in the oven. I'm just gonna take the bottom here and make little incisions, uh, so a little cross, and we can inject that with a piping bag with our cream, which we're gonna make in a minute. But these have worked a charm, I can't believe it. Stonking. I'm so relieved this has worked out, and I'm really regretting the fact that I've turned it into a crock and bouche. If I did, profiteroles or eclairs would be done by now, but no. You're a wizard, Barry. So for the cream, uh, double cream, nice and chilled. There we go, thick, stiff peaks. In goes our friend vanilla extract. About three good tablespoons of icing sugar. No need to sift it, because we're gonna blast it. And that is our cream done. I was gonna whiz through some Oreos for like a cookies and cream vibe, but this will do. Okay, then now comes the extremely exciting step of uh, piping all of these <laughs> with the crosses that we've done at the bottom. And I've actually made double the amount, so it's been about another hour and a half. Gonna actually just push it straight into that cross we've made, and then hopefully just push uh, through. And there you go, you can see the cream wants to come out like that. We've filled it. So I've just gotta do that, I don't know, like 200 times. <laughs> Yeah, so I've actually got, uh, this is the batch that I made before, and this is the second batch that I've made. So we do have a fair amount there. We're gonna be shoving them up here, and the important thing is to get like the outer edge, sort of pointing, it's obviously got the flat side with the cream. That's gonna face inward, so you build that outside shell. I don't think it's gonna be as big as that, but it's still gonna be big. 
So this is going to be the top one that I'm going to put as far up there as I can. Uh, and I've got a little bit of white chocolate that I'm putting all around the base because they're going to hit that. Oh my gosh, I can't even fit my arm up there. Okay, so you can see that in there there. I'm going to try and now get almost like four sides to it. Up, down, left, right, okay? But again, a bit of chocolate on there. And as much as you want to help hold it. All right. And hopefully you can see that is lying down. Oh, it's almost <laughs> like looking into the abyss. So the aim is to just sort of keep building it around this, making sure that you keep the outside facing out or at least the rounded edge. All right, folks, we are at the last one. Uh, so I'm down to here, but I don't think I started it to about there. It's, it's going to be fairly big. I'm not moving it. <laughs> it's, it's all right. I love the trail of white chocolate, but of course this will all cut off. Uh, one more to go. What I'm finding is to drench it in chocolate, not only does it add more colour and work as a glue, but it does sort of hold it all together three-dimensionally. I mean, I don't think that's going to be fully flat, but that's all in there now. There was no traffic cone, but I think we kind of got there. We're just discussing how to actually move it. Yeah. <laughs> because it's quite flexible and if I leave it in here, it's room temperature, it's, it's going to take ages to set, but we're planning to try and get it into the garage. Okay. Is it holding its shape? Can you see? No. It doesn't feel like it's moved. That's hard. Can you let us know? Oh no, it's moved! Oh yeah, it's moving. It's all moving. Quick. It's all, it's all moving. Oh no! So no! I can have a lunch. The professionals, by the way, they don't use traffic cones. They have these like proper moulds for it. I said you that, didn't I? <laughs> Did yeah, <me>? they do. <laughs> you can see these top chefs like playing around with cardboard. There are some times where I probably shouldn't film and should help yeah. and just make sure that we don't drop it. But I'm just letting you documenting this that we are. Is it working all right? Yeah, you got me in. All right. Well, <laughs> so, uh... we've successfully got it in one of the coldest spots in the house. It's like a fridge out of this section. Uh, it's quite near our garage, but. I put the bowl of melted chocolate by it just as a little test because if I know that this is firmed up then technically all of that should be too and that's when we'll try and get it out. The key word is try. We're gonna go walk the dogs and give it a couple of hours. <laughs> We're back. I uh, had a nice little bit of lunch didn't we? Okay. Nice little walk. Yeah. This is the bowl that was by uh, the wizard's hat mold thing. Look, that's how set the chocolate is. That's pretty set. That's pretty set. Uh, so it should be okay. Can you smell fish as well? Can you smell that squid ink? Yeah. We've come back in here and it's like, we haven't opened it. I think I might need to bury it in the ground. Someone did tell me, I'll get squid ink rather than the activated charcoal. I think it's odorless. Oh, it's not. It's not. It is definitely not. It does feel nice and strong. It feels like a bouquet of flowers. It looks like it. I oh, did you trim have. the bottom bit as well. Uh, so it's oh, yeah. nice and flush with this, okay? Okay. So hopefully... Are we just going to tip it? I say we. You. Look at that! <laughs> it's not that high. It might be about halfway. Oh, wow, it's up here. Oh, 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 wow, there's a top. I see There's a top. The you top. can see its head. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, it's going to tilt this way. Okay. Okay, okay. Massively. Um, right, we need... <gasps> it's beautiful! Oh my god. Let me turn it around. That, look at that. Oh. <laughs> like, out of context, this looks a bit weird, but I wanted to say, like, I wanted to use every single one that I had. It would have been much easier if I took off that bottom row, but it's just given me a bit more height. Are you alright, Mrs. B? Yeah. Are you worried it's about to fall? I think that's blooming awesome. Oh, that's amazing. <laughs> I've turned it round, it does look like better like a Christmas tree like that, but it wants to lean forward. But if I have it on that side, that's where, with it being the card, it kind of misshaped a little bit. So use a traffic cone. I'm over the moon with that, considering we've done that in like, I don't know, like five hours from scratch. Yes. You did very well. Yeah. Well done. Oh, wow. <laughs> it's a mini one. It's a mini one. Girls, are you enjoying us? No. Brilliant. So, I don't know why they wouldn't want this. No, it doesn't look like bits of coal. Doesn't look like, it does look like coal, you're right. I was gonna say it looks like some sort of like carcass. Um, well, I think you just like rip some off. Obviously take it from the bottom. Oh, the cream. Oh, wow. That is insane. Mm. I can just about taste the chocolate, just a small element of it in the dough, but mm. It's done, it's cooked through, the white chocolate packs a punch. 
You can't taste any charcoal, which is a, a bonus. No. Just like before. Definitely can't taste any squid ink. <laughs> they taste. I think better than normal profit rolls. Maybe it's the white chocolate. Maybe it is the white chocolate. That chocolate, having it like that, has just held it all together. But I was gonna, mm. I had a bowl ready behind to drizzle it all on. In fact, we still could. We still could. This is what I was gonna do, but it's kind of like set it anyway. anyway. But because sometimes they like spin sugar and do all that on it. This is what I was gonna do, but it's done it for me. Yeah. There we go. <sighs> well, mm. try this with the charcoal or without, as I say, and it is amazing. Like, have another one. flavor the cream, play around with some sponge sugar on the top, mm. something like that. If you fancy um, checking out the other two black recipes I did, the black lemonade and the black bread pizza dough stuff. I once ate a whole bowl of these when I was at a wedding when I was like 10. It was me, best day ever, yeah. Well, apart from our wedding day, that was all right. So that's it, I hope you uh, enjoyed the video. Don't forget to subscribe. Uh, if you would like to see another black recipe, do let me know down below. I don't think I will, but it's been really fun doing these. And um, we got some eating to do. Yeah. Ciao for now. Bye. Check your level player. No matter what your style, the kitchen's for me. Simon's mustache, goatee, maybe all three. Not sure if he mentioned, but I said shooed a few times in this video. Shooed.